Hi, everyone, and welcome to our third episode of the Belonging at Work podcast. My goal here is to bring additional perspectives, both internal and external, to how we think about diversity, inclusion, and belonging. I'm excited to welcome Pam Chabra Malik, who is an executive director at J.P. Morgan Chase's in-house leadership development practice. She most recently was the head of diversity and inclusion of the Corporate Investment Bank. I'm excited to get her perspective on what diversity, inclusion, and belonging looks like in another large and historic corporation. A little background on Pam and I. We met as undergrads. We attended Barnard College, a women's liberal arts college in New York City, and one of the original Seven Sister Schools. It was founded in 1869, as a response to Columbia University's refusal to admit women at that time. Needless to say, Pam and I are both beneficiaries of being in a space that prioritized women's leadership and academic accomplishment. So welcome, Pam, and thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Ninu. I'm really excited to be here today. Yes, I am absolutely thrilled that we're finally having this conversation. (laughs) Let me start, let me start here. So being a leader for diversity within a large corporation requires passion. How did you start out in this work and grow into this role? Good question. In my first several years on Wall Street, I was in sales, but I kept gravitating towards the people stuff, like interviewing and training new joiners. I also worked at a small company where the boss would only greet people in his inner circle in the morning and ignore the others. So talk about the opposite of inclusion. I was always interested in how people operated at work. So I decided to get my master's in industrial organizational psychology. Um, I started my career in HR soon after that. And when I got into diversity and inclusion, I had really felt like I hit the jackpot. So here I was doing purpose-driven work, such as helping the business set diversity strategy, but also helping diverse employees on the ground get development experiences, connect with each other, and really broaden their exposure um, to influential networks. So for example, Ninu, I ran the first ever re-entry program for women and men who had taken career breaks and wanted to return to work. Um, Another great experience that stands out for me was last year, I set up listening sessions with our Black colleagues in the wake of George Floyd's murder, um, and we just learned so much about the experience of being Black um, in the organization. I spent six years in DNI, and I just moved into executive leadership development. So now my goal is to incorporate leading inclusively into the foundation of all the training that we do. Yeah, um, I, I've seen this uh, journey you've been on for the past twenty years, and and Pam, when you got more involved in DNI, um, it just made a- absolute and perfect sense. So I'm excited what you're going to do with this next chapter. Thank you, Pam. Maybe a great place start to start here would be what is diversity at J.P. Morgan Chase? How do you guys define it? Oh, yes, that's a good one, Ninu. So when we think about diversity, you know, we definitely look at some of the more well-known categories in terms of measurement, right? So we look at um, groups like uh, we look at women in the U.S. We look at our ethnic groups, Black, Hispanic, and Asian But we also go a lot deeper, um, especially when we're thinking around diversity in its broadest sense. So um, we have a lot of effort centered around LGBT, um, vets, people with disabilities. And if you you peel back the layers a bit, you also can get into neurodiversity, right? We have a great Um, autism at work program where we've successfully hired individuals with autism in our um, technology space and we're looking to expand that. And so diversity can be so broad. Um, However, it's really important not to lose sight of the larger categories that I mentioned because representation matters. So visible diversity is, is very powerful, but we absolutely recognize that 
There's a lot of diversity that you can't see. And um, that is critical for inclusion as well. What are some things you focus on in diversity inclusion at J.P. Morgan Chase? Where are you making progress and where is it still hard to move forward? Yeah, so when I think about um, DNI at J.P. Morgan Chase, we've been focused on it for a long time, right? We've put a lot of resources behind it, whether it's running programs for our diverse talent, um, recruiting a more diverse set of college graduates, um, and having well-established business resource groups. So we've done that for a while. I would say we have a great culture around DNI. Um, what I've seen us spend more time on, which I think is really important, and I think it's going in the right direction, is understanding the employee experience from a DNI perspective. So do all employees have a good understanding of how to advance in their careers, right? Like, do they have a, is, is, the, is the promotion process transparent to them and things like that? And so we're really, uh, I would say, peeling back the layers to make sure that how we've set up people processes is transparent and equitable and fair. Um, the other thing is that we are bringing communities along the journey. So DNI is not just internal. We're using how we do business and like our core business acumen and knowledge to help underrepresented communities. So one thing that I'm really excited about was that in October, we announced a $30 billion commitment to advance racial equity. And what's different is this is not philanthropy. This is really using what we do well, like things like mortgages, affordable housing, you know, financing, literally doing what we do every day, but doing it for more people in a more inclusive way to help fuel real change. So I'm super excited about that. Um, in terms of challenges, I'd say we need to do more on intersectionality. So people don't identify just with, you know, monolithic groups, right, Ninu? So <clears throat> I don't only identify as a woman or an Asian, I'm both. And I also happen to be cisgender and a mother. Mm -hmm. And so identities are complex and we really need to treat it that way and think differently around um, how we deliver DNI. Yeah, absolutely. I hear so many parallels in where your journey has been and what we at um, GE overall have been mm -hmm. doing. The employee experience is absolutely essential um, to that. The structural inclusion pieces that you're talking about, um, that you're putting in place, not just within the workplace, but also within communities. Um, so it's uh, it's interesting how many parallels there are in this journey, and that each of our corporations have something to contribute to that. You know, more broadly than just for employees, but in our in the communities that we serve. Um, so it's great to uh, hear that from you. Um, so we really talked exciting. a little. <laughs> we talked a little bit about um, employee experience, and when I've been looking at that at G Digital, um, it's really centered around this notion of belonging. So we've called this year our year of belonging. What does that word belonging mean to you? So that's interesting. Our tagline for diversity and inclusion at J.P. Morgan Chase is you belong here. Mm -hmm. So belonging is so powerful. To me, it means no matter who you are, you have a place at this organization and you have a lot to contribute. And most importantly, you are appreciated. So when I think back to my early days of working at that small company and, and there were and there were people who weren't greeted by name, right? Like how yeah. how how much must how must they have felt any sense of belonging, you know, whatsoever? And it's very basic forms. Um, so I, I, I think belonging is, is, is so powerful and we need to cultivate that feeling in our employees as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. I remember conversations you and I would have at dinner, or, um, you know, just when we would be catching up around that time at that smaller company. And it's interesting. It was a very small company. Everyone could know each other by name. Um, and so it, it feels even more um, 
you know, an erasure of an identity if you just don't even uh, acknowledge the people that are around you. So um, very powerful. So we're in Women's History Month. And recently we celebrated International Women's Day. What are some of your reflections as we observe and celebrate the vital role of women in history? Yes, um, and I remember all of the, the great stories that we've shared and learned about women during this month throughout the years. Um, you've always been really passionate about that. So yesterday, actually, I walked past my daughter who was attending her remote pre-K session on Zoom. The teacher was reading a story about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the ways in which she resisted even as a child. So Nino, I don't know if you know this, but she, but she was actually left-handed, but like other left-handed kids at the time, she was forced to write with her right hand. Mm -hmm. So of course her handwriting was horrible with her non-dominant mm -hmm. hand, right? And so she got a D in penmanship. And you know they're reading the story and they say, that very day, Ruth decided to resist and start writing with her left hand. And knowing what I know about the rest of her life, I got chills down my spine in a really good way. So it's so important to share these stories of women in history because it's constantly inspiring the next set of activists, leaders, and resistors of the status quo. And, and not just little girls, by the way, you know, boys as well. So I just Absolutely. thought that was a really timely story for today. Yeah, I, I, I did know that story and it, it's a credit to you that I know that story. Um, was it pre-pandemic, we were lucky enough to see each other and you had gotten me a um, graphic novel about the life of RBG. And um, and to your point, I shared that, you know, I read that out loud with Akash, right? We went through that um, uh, journey of understanding her life through comic book form. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's very powerful. Um, even from a young age, how much power you do have uh, to drive inclusion. So um, that, 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 that's a great example. If you could go back in time, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to your younger self? Ooh, well, mm -hmm. so I would tell my younger self not to put off trying what you really want to do. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I mentioned that I, it took me seven years to get into um, a, a job that I really loved. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, don't be afraid to take a risk. Um, you know, have faith in your talents and pursuing the work that directly capitalizes on that talent. Because if you love what you do, even more doors will open for you. Yeah. And that's a, yeah. that's a question I actually want to turn right back to you, Nino. What would you, what advice would you give yourself? Yeah, and, and it's funny, cause I feel like um, we've been on a journey from our younger selves to our older selves together and you've played a profound um, impact on that. Um, and I remember that journey for you. So I think for me, um, if there's one thing that I could just sort of shake little Nino and really help her understand is the power of habit and deliberate practice. There were all these things that I just, you know, even at a young age, I was like, well, I need to be better with my health habits, right? Whether that's uh, working out or eating well or just um, journaling more because I love to write so much. Mm. Um, and you, you know, now, um, you know, dare I say it in our 40s, <laughs> um, it just becomes even more like, oh my gosh, all the places where I made that investment. It, you've really seen it pay off now and where where I still struggle are the ones where you know I uh, I just couldn't get that deliberate practice or habit going so I um, that's what I would tell younger Ninu and and now it's so much about how do I help um, Akash you know form those those habits um, uh, Akash is my son for those of you um, who are listening well Pam it has been a thrill to have this conversation with you I think we've talked about doing this since uh, since December um, of this year, uh, of this past year. So thank you for your time today. And um, I, uh, I hope we can have you back again to share, you know, your, your continued journey. 
Ninu, it's been a pleasure and I really um, admire and respect your leadership. And I am just looking forward to partnering together 